Welcome in, everybody, to Betting Pros. It's time to place your bets. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and Week 15 was a doozy. Oh, my goodness. We had the greatest comeback in NFL history in a regular season. We had one of the wackiest endings you'll ever see in a football game between the Las Vegas Raiders and the New England Patriots. And then you had Sunday Night Football end on what was, I would call, the textbook PI call that did not get called. It was crazy. There was weather. There was snow. There were comebacks. There were upsets as well how about those jacksonville jaguars baby trevor lawrence let's go but we're gonna break that all down for week 16 and what that means to look ahead at these early lines what we saw what it means and the guys to help me do it are, of course pat fitzmorris and matthew friedman so we're gonna get after that before we do gentlemen we've got one more game it's monday night football and pat it's the packers obviously uh, your squad here hosting the los angeles rams the rams are four nine the packers are five and eight Seven point favorites are Green Bay. We'll see coming off the bye what they've got. 39 and a half is the number for this one. If you like the Rams for the upset, it's plus 260 on the money line. Pat, let's break this down. Any value left on this game tonight or anything specifically you're looking to wager on? I think there is, Joe. I don't like the Rams for the upset. Um, the Rams got the Mayfield miracle in week 15. Uh, <laughs> was that week 15 or week 14? Sorry. To. Um, avoid their eighth straight loss. So like the Rams are, are not a good team. They're averaging 16.6 points a game this season. They're not going to have Aaron Donald for this, their defensive stalwart. Uh, it's going to be 15 degrees at kickoff for this game. Uh, I don't see the Rams bad offense functioning at a high level in that sort of weather. And we talked about this a little on the live stream yesterday, Joe Friedman and I, like when you get that kind of weather in green Bay, the Packers are really used to this. And, even though the field has these heating coils underneath, like there are certain types of cleats that you wear for different temperatures and different field conditions. And like the Packers equipment guys are used to all this. They know what the, the story is. The Rams equipment guys are not going to like know these things. Like it's, it's much harder to prepare for those types of conditions if you're a warm weather team and just not used to dealing with this at all. So I do think there's value here. Um, you know, I, I slammed the Packers at seven points and I'm glad that it dropped from seven and a half, uh, mm -hmm. you know, getting it at, at that key number. But yeah, I just, I, I'm certainly not overly confident in the Packers, as you know, Joe, but I like them a lot in this spot against a really depleted Rams team, a really punchless offense. Matthew Friedman, you and I are going to break this game down later this afternoon on the live stream. But uh, for me, this is Christian Watson at the plus 140 anytime touchdown scorer. And then that's it. I'm just putting some money down on that. And I'm walking away from it. Any uh, quick hits on this game before we move on to the look ahead for week 16? Yeah, I don't hate the uh, anytime touchdown score. And I just got to say, you know, we have a, a Packers defense that wants to run the ball. They're at home coming off of the bye going against a defense that is bad anyway and missing like the entirety of the interior of its defensive line. Like this is just a great spot for, for the Packers and Sean McVay, you know, the, the warm weather dome coach, uh, and five against the spread in conditions where the uh, temperature is less than 40 degrees. Uh, I, I think this is very much a Packers spot that said it does feel disgusting to be betting them, uh, at any sort of margin, but, uh, I have this projected at minus nine. Now, lots of look ahead weather uh, to come here as we break down the games. Before we do, just a reminder, we are brought to you by BetMGM, the king of sports books. You get a risk-free $1,000 first bet plus $25 after your first bet settles. Essentially, it's the new offer here over at BetMGM. So go to BetMGM, download the app, and use the promo code BETTINGPROS25. That's BETTINGPROS25 when you do, and place your bets today. Gentlemen, let's kick things off here with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, baby, let's go. Joey P was very happy about this. Jacksonville upsetting the Dallas Cowboys. I'm sorry for even, you know, earmuffs. But the New York Jets uh, will be hosting them this week. They are two-point favorites at home. We're not sure if it's going to be Zach Wilson or Mike White at this point. Uh, close game there for uh, the Lions-Jets. But Jacksonville is certainly looking like they're playing their best football on offense and on defense. Trevor Lawrence looks like he is finally coming into his own. 42 is the number, plus 106. Friedman, let's start here with you. Jacksonville is on a roll here. Can they continue to do this traveling up to cold weather in New York? Yeah, it wouldn't surprise if uh, this line actually did close with Jacksonville favored. 
Uh, I have it projected. And I'll just this is going to be a kind of common theme throughout the the rest of the show where I have a lot of uh, the projections pretty in line with the market. It's it's that point of the year. Like last year, I think some of the last week rather, I think some of the biggest edges had to do in the games where uh, we had backup quarterbacks, and so the market wasn't quite gauging accurately the difference between the backup and the starter. That's where most of the edges were this week. Mm -hmm. We don't have many of those situations and week 16, the market has a pretty good sense of what all of these teams are. So yeah, this, this number right now is plus one across the board. Plus one at bet MGM. I have it at at plus one for the Jags, but uh, just because as you mentioned of how great they have played the momentum that the Jags have in the market, I would, I would think that this number flips towards the Jags. I would absolutely do it. If, if there's any number to jump on here in the early look ahead, this first game, uh, I mean, it's a short week, too. That's the only thing uh, you're getting here. So that is the only thing that comes into play. Sometimes it's tough for the short week, the team that's traveling. That being said, it's also less time for Mike White to get cleared. Yeah, and he is clearly the better quarterback. So, Pat, what do you make of this game here? Is this another one? You're kind of where we are, where we're jumping on this one early. Yeah, it is less time for Mike White to get cleared, Joe. And um, Zach Wilson, though averaged 9.1 yards per pass attempt and had his second 300 yard game of his career yesterday. So he wasn't what what's that no, Raven? It was not it was not a good Zach Wilson. I, it was I know. Was, that, yeah. that's one I, where you're watching the lines and not the game on that one because I know man, some there were some bad throws in that game. Some yeah. of the completions were, you know, heaves that uh, found their way in a heaves Garrett Wilson's bread basket 30 yeah. 35 yards downfield. So I understand. I'm not trying to sell you on Zach Wilson. Um and well, I'm not getting really, no quarter here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, I, I'm not really going to sell you on the over either uh, because weather conditions are going to probably factor into this one. Mm-hmm. I, right now I've got it at uh, 40 and a half instead of 39 and a half, but I'm not inclined to bet that, uh, especially with Zach Wilson likely to get another start here. Uh, the Jaguars did roll up over 500 yards of offense on the Cowboys, though. That is really mm-hmm. impressive. And they ran the ball between the tackles, like, effectively for the first time in a long time. So um, this offense is really humming, going against an excellent defense that got, had Quinn and Williams play. There was some question about whether uh, the, the Jets' wrecking ball defensive tackle was going to play yesterday. He did play. So I can't wait to see that matchup of the Jaguars' offense and the Jets' defense. But as uh, just to echo what Friedman said, and this will be a recurring theme, trying to get early value from these lines is like trying to squeeze blood from a turnip. It's just not there this week. Well, you're going to laugh about this one, guys, because I'm looking at FanDuel right now as we were talking, and the Jags are now minus one and a half there. Oh, wow. Uh, while we were having this conversation, so they're obviously listening to the show live, uh, but on top of which, uh, it's plus 100. So I just bet it real quick there because they're getting plus money on that, which is something you never really see <laughs> very often. So could be an error, could be a mistake, could just be as they're fluctuating through things. But I locked it in. So there you go. Good times. That's why you listen to the show here, folks. That's what you're trying to do. Uh, let's get to the next game on the board here. The New York Giants coming off a big victory, questionable one going against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, the Minnesota Vikings, this game is on Saturday, everybody. So uh, they are the champions of Saturday. The Minnesota Vikings are unbelievable on Saturdays, folks. Uh, Just look, I don't know what there is to say else about that game, except the only question that lingers now is after you play such an emotional game like that, is there a letdown? And if so, is this the kind of team that you should not look past in the New York football giants? Are they a kind of team that you, you look ahead there on, you know, the Saturday afternoon and you say to yourself, yeah, I don't know if this is necessarily the next, uh, way you want to go about, uh, <laughs> this year and do you want to get in early here on either of these things here because pat when we start to look at this line here three and a half for minnesota they're at home giants are traveling Thibodeau was great 47 and a half is the number plus 165 on the money line so pat any early value on this game for you oh man um i don't think there is joe i mean like is there an emotional letdown for the vikings maybe but i'm sure they're just going to do what the vikings always do which is scuff around and then find a way to win a one score game uh every time we're ready to just completely stamp them as a fraud which again on saturday it looked like we were very uh would have been very justified in doing then they just storm back so yeah i don't like betting the vikings at this point just because like they're one of these inexplicable teams that sort of defies all uh all of the metrics like to have that record and you know to be in the 20s in dvoa is just Mm -hmm. uh 
something extraordinary is going on with that team this season. So as far as the value, though, like my initial run of projections, I had this like half a point of value on the under. But, man, the last six Vikings games have produced 63, 43, 59, 49, 57 and 75 points. And uh, six of their last eight at home have gone over. So I'm uh, pretty much ripping up the projections in this and, uh, you know, might even might even take the over on it well they've been this team in the past that's always lost these close games or had these heartbreaking losses and it seems like everything this year is the opposite finally like karma's kind of caught up to them this game has moved though so it was uh looking at yesterday four and a half yesterday before the games and today uh obviously a different number we're seeing we're seeing the three and a half so it's moved a whole point friedman do you see this moving anymore yeah to your point in the look ahead this was four and a half it opened to four now it's three and a half this morning uh it might continue to move like People like the market generally does not like the Vikings and it does like the Giants. And so maybe it hits three, but I think if it hits three at that point, Vikings money comes in and it meets resistance and goes back to three and a half. So I I think three and a half ultimately will be the number. I actually I I don't like it, but I have value. This is (laughs) this is one of the few spots where I do have value on a, a team the Vikings here, I have this projected at 5.25 and I didn't adjust them up in the power ratings after last week. Like it wasn't a good performance that they had Uh, great that they were able to come back, but I don't think they really get credit for that. Like you shouldn't be down by 33 points, the lowly Colts, Uh, the giants, they get a little bit of credit uh, for beating uh, Washington, but you still have in this spot uh, the Vikings at home, the Vikings with a full week of rest because they played last week on Saturday. Mm Uh, you know, the Giants playing on Sunday night football. So like six days, but a short six days. Sure. Uh, I think the advantage here actually is with the Vikings. That said, I haven't bet it yet because uh, I just don't really trust it. I don't want to be on the Vikings, but eventually <laughs> I think I'm going to bet this. May I interject I, for a moment here, Joe? Sure, yeah. I was just, so I've like had that same, I don't know, Friedman, some of these lines of late with the Vikings seem disrespectful. Like everyone was like, why are they yeah, underdogs? Yeah, we talked to about that Lions? two weeks ago. Right. And then uh, last week against, like I didn't really buy it. I understood the Lions line, but then I saw the line for the Colts and, uh, you know, I took it at three and a half because I thought that was disrespectful. I got the Vikings at three and a half. And, you know, it turned out to be pretty spot on. Pretty um, accurate. Yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I'm just every time I think I see this line and I'm like, wow, even though I think the Vikings are frauds, that seems really disrespectful. And then it winds up not being disrespectful at all. So, um, you know, I, I do have that urge every time I see a Vikings line. Like, I, I feel like the Vikings should be favored by more at home. But then, you know, I just like I can't do it. I yeah. can't do it with this game. The Baltimore Ravens will be home hosting the Atlanta Falcons. This one started out at six and a half right now. Currently a seven in the consensus on bettingpros.com. Nine and five of the Ravens. They have all sorts of offensive problems here. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons, five and nine. Desmond Ritter was you know driving there at the end. Unfortunately, Drake London couldn't hold on to the football. So alas, we'll never know what might have come of that drive. But 40 is the number for this one. Plus 240 on the money line for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, Fitz, let's talk about this one for a second because it feels as though You know, the Baltimore Ravens are, I would say, treading water right now. I think that's the best way to put it. That They don't necessarily look great. The defense, you know, has its moments. But offensively, they have just been a mess for what seems like two months now. So is this just as simple as, yeah, the Falcons come in town to get right game? Or is this another dangerous game here where maybe that seven is too big of a number? Maybe Baltimore still should be the favorite. Maybe they should win. Are they seven-point favorites with the way offensively they operate right now? I've been giving the Ravens way too much credit in recent weeks, Joe. And, uh, you know, like I I have enjoyed betting the Ravens at home for a long time, and it's generally been profitable. Um, In this instance, I still want to grab the Ravens at minus seven, hoping that Lamar Jackson comes back this week from his sprained PCL. And even if he doesn't come back, I still think there's a chance that they can outclass uh, the Falcons, even though they really stumbled around on offense against the Browns, just could not get anything going. Um, But Desmond Ritter clearly is not ready for prime time. I mean, he was 13 of 26 for 97 yards at 3.7 yards per pass attempt. And he was sacked four times. So, um, you know, the Falcons ran the ball effectively, very effectively against the Saints yesterday, but I don't think they're going to do that against the Ravens in Baltimore. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to 
make the leap of faith here at the touchdown, get it before it goes up at all on any possible positive Lamar Jackson news, and feel like I have a reasonable chance to win that bet even if Lamar doesn't come back this week. Friedman, with the way Atlanta likes to run the football, too, and the lack of uh, offense from Baltimore, is the under just the safest number here in the 40 and just stay away from the seven altogether? Maybe. I I mean, I have this actually projected to the over, but the thing is a lot of my projections aren't strongly taking into account the weather. And so I know like these projections aren't they're not bettable the way that I would want them to be. And I actually I think there is value on the the seven. In fact, I think at points bet, that's where the one six and a half is remaining. And I would probably go bet that right now. Um I am assuming that Lamar Jackson comes back, but even if he's not, uh, yeah, Desmond Ritter looked really bad last week. Like there's, mm-hmm. there's a reason why they weren't inserting him into the starting lineup sooner. And this Falcons offense is entirely ground-based and they're going against now with Roquan Smith on the, the Ravens, one of the best run defenses in the league. And so if they have a rookie quarterback who really can't do much through the air, if they're not able to function on offense at peak capacity because they're running into the teeth of the defense, I still think even if Tyler Huntley is out there, the Ravens are probably able to cover. So, yeah, I, I think I'm probably going to be on the Ravens here, but I haven't bet it yet. Greatest team in the history of the universe, the Detroit Lions, who are now 7-7. Seven and seven. That's right, everybody. Uh, they were two-and-a-half-point favorites. Now they're three-point favorites this morning. Going into Carolina, Carolina is five and nine. They are three point home underdogs. Forty four and a half is the number for this one. Plus one thirty if for the Carolina Panthers and the upset. Now, Friedman, we've been watching the Lions a long time, all three of us. Uh, this is definitely, I would say, one of the most enjoyable Lions teams we've ever seen in our lifetime. They are fun to watch. They are fun to root for. But that being said, is this a classic Lions spot here where you should go in there and just blow the doors off the Carolina Panthers, who aren't a great football team, but defensively do have some players here and we know Jared Goff you know outside not the same quarterback inside we've seen the stats we've seen the numbers we've seen the offense we even saw it on Sunday are you confident here with the Detroit Lions in this number right now I mean confident uh I don't know but I bet it uh you know uh, <laughs> that's, I, that's a yes then yeah I, I bet it that's at, a yes I bet it at two and a half uh you know in the look ahead because I just you know I my numbers just tend to be high on the Lions and I thought this number probably would get to three which it has but I still see value at the three I have it projected at 4.25 and yeah as you mentioned Goff uh historically hasn't been great outside of the dome uh, but at least I don't think he's going to be in some of those like weather apocalypse games uh, that we'll probably see across the slate. Like in Carolina, I mean, it'll be colder. The weather's not going to be great, but it's not as if uh, I think we're going to see like winds of 20 miles per hour or something like that in Carolina. So I don't think the weather's going to be a major factor for the Lions. Uh, I mean, what we've seen out of them uh, over the past six weeks has been pretty incredible. Uh, especially offensively, but their defense is also like here and there starting to toughen up a little yeah. bit. So as long as it's not like the the worst unit in the league, then that team is is pretty intriguing going against a, a team that I consider. I mean, Sam Darnold is their starting quarterback for the Panthers. Like, let's not pretend that they are a good team. They are a bad team. They're one of the, mm-hmm. the five worst teams in the league. So yeah, I think even on the road, the Lions should be favored by more than three points here. They do have five wins though, just saying. Somehow they eked out five. Uh, with mer- varying different quarterbacks, by the way. The one thing, though, Carolina likes to run the football, and the one thing the Lions have started to do is tighten up in the last six weeks against that run. So does that make this three a little bit more palatable for you, Fitz? That's what I was going to get to, Joe. Uh, the run defense, like the Lions have gone from being a sieve against the run to actually being pretty stout in the last four or five weeks. And meanwhile, the Panthers running game was completely stuck in the mud yesterday against the Steelers. They ran 16 times for 21 yards could not get anything going against the uh, Steelers on the ground. And if you take away the Panthers running game, that leaves Sam Darnold to try to win you the game. Lots of luck with that. Um, Yeah, and we know the the Lions have a lot of firepower on offense, and maybe Mm -hmm. they don't display it quite as often when they're outside. But as Friedman mentioned, probably not going to get terribly inclement weather in Charlotte uh, on Sunday. So, you know, maybe it's a, a little, I don't know. Maybe a little chillier than it would be in the Dome, but I think, yeah, I'm inclined to bet the Lions here. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, guys, but I feel like, you know, when you're looking at the Lions, one of their huge strengths is their their depth on offense. 
they are one of the deepest offensive teams. You got three guys who are capable of running the football. You've got a bunch of wide receivers who are capable. Uh, it just, I don't know. I mean, you saw, you saw, you saw the tight end have a big touchdown yesterday at the end of the game. It's sort of, it looks to me like this is the time of year where a lot of teams are banged up and a lot of, you know, but the depth is really what's been carrying them these last few weeks into these wins because they have such a deep offensive roster. Uh, it's credit to the the GM for putting this team together. And All great, right, let's go. And Joe, to your point, yeah. great mm-hmm. offensive line too. Yeah, so that terrific really, that offensive really line. Is a and big Penny Sewell was such a smart pick for them when they picked it. Like that was, that was a very disciplined, smart pick. They did that a couple of years ago. Good on them. You're 100% right. The old line's playing great football, too. Uh, the Buffalo Bills won another close one here. We expected Buffalo to just dominate. Well, the line's telling you they expect them to dominate in this game here against the uh, Chicago Bears. They're on the road. This was at 10. It moved to 9, which I thought was just slightly curious. I mean, Buffalo did win that football game against the Dolphins, who were a pretty good football team themselves. 41 is the number, plus 340 on the money line for the Chicago Bears. Uh, Friedman, let's start with you with this one, with the Chicago Bears here. Why do you think this one moved from 10 to 9? I don't understand that personally. I mean, I understand that the Bears kind of hung around with the Eagles, but I don't think when you're watching that game, you came away like the Bears can compete necessarily with some of the top teams in the NFL. Yeah, I think it's uh, a few reasons. So one is that like the Bears, we did see them just get a cover against one of the best teams in the league. The Bills have struggled to cover uh, this year. Like they, they've got a great team, but they don't have like the the killer where they just put right. bad teams away. Uh, they kind of let them hang around a little bit and get the cover. And then part of it, I think a big part of it is the potential weather issues. And so if the total is dropping, that just means fewer overall points are going to be scored. And so it doesn't make sense for gotcha. the Bills to be favored by like nine and a half, ten. They should probably and it's be dropped favored. precipitously to your yeah. point, 45 and a half yesterday, 41 today. Yeah. And so I still, I mean, I still like the Bills. I still have this projected at 10 and I believe this line is eight at FanDuel. Uh, so I think that is a bettable line. Uh, you are correct on FanDuel. It is at eight. I'm looking at that right now. Uh, Fitz, uh, your thoughts on Bears and Bills here. Do you see any value as this number starts to disintegrate a little bit? I don't because I think the weather is what's affecting this line, Joe. They are forecasting mm-hmm. 11 degrees uh, for temperature. Is that all? 28 mile an hour winds. So it's going to be sub zero wind chill slash feels like temperatures. Um, and this is going to be a, a theme with a lot of these games that we're about to talk about. Um, like I'm a, almost inclined to make a sweeping bet where I uh, treat this like a fund and bet something on the under in every Midwestern and East Coast game. And it's going to be worse in the Midwest. Like we're supposed to, and this Arctic blast we're getting here in Chicago, I'm I'm in the Chicago area. It's going to come on the heels of like eight to 25 inches of snow on Thursday and Friday. Like we are about to get slammed with a Christmas storm here and, uh, you know, followed by this Arctic plunge on the weekend. So it's going to be really interesting weather and i think it's going to be really ground based and like people were really concerned about what the weather was going to be like in buffalo on saturday night with the snow and everything this is the buffalo weather game here Mm -hmm. except it's in chicago and not in buffalo christmas slam arctic plunge also uh, mountain dew flavors later to be released (laughs) in 2023 uh so all i'm hearing though by the way is the over on Justin Fields rushing props when you're talking. That's all as you're saying these weather, that's all I'm thinking to myself is like, what's that number? Yeah, I'm gonna go over it. Maybe for Josh Allen too in that same game. Let's get to the next one here. Uh New Orleans and Cleveland. Now, this one uh, has the Cleveland Browns favored by three at home. They came out with a victory. Not surprised at all that they won that game against the Ravens, to tell you the truth. 34 and a half is the over under, another gross, horrible low total, another. Midwestern-ish kind of game here, uh, plus 150 on the money line if you like the Saints. Fitz, what do you see in this here, if any early value? Um, I'm seeing a little bit of value on the Browns because the weather in Cleveland is supposed to be even worse than the weather in Chicago. Uh, snow showers possible in Cleveland and 35 mile an hour winds. And that's sustained winds. No one is passing in that. And Joe, I am like the biggest fade the weather guy you will find in mm-hmm. betting and fantasy. 
I am not fading 35 mile an hour sustained wins. Like offenses will not, passing games will not be able to function in 35 mile an hour wins. It it just won't happen. So who's better built to win a game where you are forced to run the ball like 90% of the time? I think it's the Browns with their running game with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt against a Saints team that was just carved up on the ground by Tyler Algier and Cordero Patterson. Uh, the, the Browns running game isn't great either, as uh, I think Friedman was getting ready to interject. But uh, I still yeah, think he's very excited. Yeah, I think a running only game um, favors the Browns here. All right. So if it's a run fest over here in Cleveland, is uh, that how you see things as well, Friedman? I uh, I don't disagree with what Fitz just said in terms of the weather, but I'm actually like, I'm going to take a stand on this game. It's probably stupid, but I actually <laughs> like the Saints here. I think, I think it's a Taysom Hill game. Like Deshaun Watson, uh, like okay. dome, yeah. like dome Deshaun Watson. I don't think he's really settled into the elements. I think the Saints have the perfect type of quarterback who plays mm. tight end, but I think it's going to be a Taysom Hill running down your throat type of game. And so I think, like he gets a lot of run. Uh, and I honestly, I'm, I'm taking the over like this hit 34 last night. I'm just like, no, like I just, I put my foot down. And I was like, no, I, I know there's going to be weather, but weathermen are sometimes wrong. Sometimes weather gets overblown and 34 is just too low of a number for an NFL game. And it has bumped up a little to 34 and a half, 35. And I'm probably wrong, but so I'm at this point officially rooting for the over and I'm, I'm on the saints. Uh, I'm probably wrong on the saints. Like Fitz, you're, I think you are on the sharper side on, on the spread because I bet it at three and a half and it's continued to move towards, uh, towards the Browns. Uh, so, you know, it's anyway, I, I don't know. I don't know. Can I make it's a fascinating make a take? Sure. I, I just want to get that fascinating take about Deshaun Watson, the elements, because if the Cleveland Browns got us of a quarterback that can't play in the elements, this is not a good investment. Uh, I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> like, yeah, I never even thought about that. I don't know if it's the rust or if it's the weather, what's going on with him. Obviously, maybe a combination of both. Go ahead, Fitz. Um, yeah, but Friedman might be right, Joe. Like, Taysom Hill might be the perfect quarterback for this. And I kind of didn't even think about Dang. the Taysom Hill Fire factor. Fire up them Taysom now, Hill shares yeah, at tight end. If you got him, let's go. <laughs> but this this reminds me of the game when, uh, you know, and I was telling Friedman about this while it was happening uh, maybe a month ago on a Saturday where Iowa was playing Minnesota in Big Ten football. And the total was like 31 and a half or 32. And I'm like, I got to bet the over on this. And it was a really windy day in the Midwest. And uh, it was looking good for a while, and then it completely sputtered out in the game, finished with a total of under 30. So um, it's one of those where I just I don't think I can defy the um, weather conditions and two offenses that maybe, you know, the passing games mm -hmm. aren't super sharp to begin with. I just I want to say one more time, we are a week out, and I know like – weather uh prediction has gotten a lot better in the last 20 years but we're still about a week away from these games it feels like it wouldn't take much like oh the wind came a day early and then all of a sudden not much wind you know like i i think a lot can change if we're if we were two days away i would feel much more confident in having weather-based total predictions this is a big system, man. I'm not fading the meteorologists here. Uh, see, we should have had Jim Cantor on the show. We should have had exactly. him on the Weather Channel. Had yes. his puffy coat talking to us about the football games. Uh, another team besides the Bills that seems to have a problem kind of uh, putting their foot on team, so to speak, is the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they are 10-point favorites. This one did move up from 9.5 to 10 against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, They're going to be traveling to Kansas City. 49.5 is a number, plus 370 on the money line on the Seahawks. But Fitz... Uh, you know, Kansas City Chiefs keep on, you know, letting teams hang around. They don't seem to have that killer instinct either. Uh, and that being said, it feels like the good time story of the Seahawks is starting to crumble right in front of our faces. Do you feel like that combination leads to maybe this nine to this 10, depending on where you're betting it and a 49 and a half? You couldn't have framed it any better, Joe. And this combination leads me to want to just stay away from this game. Like I am swearing, <laughs> I'm swearing off the Chiefs as a big favorite. I just do not want to bet them as a big favorite anymore. Well, maybe they we just... should learn something from it because every time they're yeah. a big favorite, maybe this is the perfect opportunity to take Seattle here because it's grown to 10, a nine and a half overnight. But the Seahawks are 0 and 5 against the spread in their last five games. <laughs> they are they're traveling. 0, yeah. 0 and 5 in their last five December games. 
uh, going to the Midwest where they are not going to get the crazy wind in Kansas City. Apparently, they're saying 11 mile an hour winds, but it's going to be 11 degrees. It's going to be chilly in Kansas City. So uh, maybe not great Seahawks weather here. All right. Well, the Seahawks do like to run the football. Uh, that's for sure. So maybe that will carry itself over. Not a great game, obviously, against San Francisco last week. But Freeman, what are your thoughts on this one? Is the line too big? Yes, but I've still bet it, you know, like I, I, I feel like <laughs> I've been, right. no, it I've been right. early, like I, I was early on, oh, the, uh, the chiefs aren't the type of team that's covering big spreads. But the thing is like two things, one, my numbers still haven't adjusted enough for that. So I, I always see value on them. And then two, always in the look ahead market, I see this line and I think that's going to move. And the thing is I'm right. I'm getting the closing line value and then I'm still losing the bets, which is, which is like the most painful thing. So like, I just need to stop betting on the chiefs, but this week I, I bet it at nine and a half. I probably wouldn't take it at 10, but my projection is 12. So I don't know. I'm, I'm probably wrong. Like I know historically the chiefs haven't done what they've needed to do in the spot, but this week I'm still on the chiefs. Okay. Still on the chiefs. The next one here are the Cincinnati Bengals are now 10 and four. And I got to tell you guys, I, I almost bet this last week. I was kind of waiting to see one more game here, how they handle themselves against Tampa. But if you ask me right now, I feel like the Cincinnati Bengals are the most dangerous team in the AFC. I, I can't put my finger on why necessarily. It's just the feeling of, you know, like you see a team that's able to come out with the victories when they need them. Joe Burrow seems to be that big game quarterback. And Cincinnati Bengals handle their business, unlike the Chiefs or the Bills sometimes. Like they actually do put teams away defensively starting to play better despite the losses on the corner uh let's talk about this game here because clearly the New England Patriots are seven and six but this is not a good seven I mean this is obviously seven and seven now but this is not a, you know a good football team let's be honest the defense has its moments the offense you know they are just completely one-dimensional at this point three and a half point underdogs the Patriots are I don't think that's a big enough number I'm gonna be honest with you 40 is the over under plus 155 on the money line if you like the Pats I don't uh Friedman, I think this should be a bigger number. I think that the Cincinnati Bengals are going to go into New England and give them a good old-fashioned whooping. What do you think about this game? Yeah, I instinctively agree with you. This number was three in the look-ahead market, and I, I saw it then. I was like, you know what? I wish I wish I would have bet it, but it's three and a half now. It's moved to four at bet MGM. Um, I have this projected at three, but I don't feel good at all about that projection. And part of it is all of the injuries that the uh, the Bengals are dealing with right now. And so, like that is still captured within my projection. Uh, Edge Trey Hendrickson is uh, you know out with a wrist injury. I doubt he plays this week. And then we also saw uh, in last week's game Edge Sam Hubbard leave. So they are pretty pretty wounded on the defensive line. Uh, obviously, uh, Chidobe Woozy is out, and then Mike Hilton was out last week. So that without two of their starters at cornerback and without two of their backups at cornerback because Jalen Davis was out, and then Cam Taylor Britt went out in the middle of the game. So, like, and, and then Hayden Hurst, but, you know, whatever. Um, like, those, those defensive injuries are not insignificant. And so I doubt sure. that the Patriots actually can exploit those injuries, but they are still there. And that is what is holding down the projection for me on the Bengals. And I understand. And look, the Uzi injury certainly has been one that's left a big gaping hole where Eli Apple has to be the number one corner again. And that's never a good situation, but that's a team that still went to the Super Bowl with that circumstance last year and really had a chance to win at the end. Uh, Fitz, uh, like uh, all those things that Friedman said are correct. I just don't think that the Patriots, at the end of the day, like he put it, can take advantage of them right now. And I know they're coming off a very stinging loss. Special teams played terrible. This is a sloppier New England team that we've seen before. They make mistakes. Usually mistake-free football is a Patriot way. That's not been the case the last couple of years. Yeah, um, I agree with that, Joe. And I, like Friedman, I have this projected as minus three for the Bengals. And there's no way I am betting – or. Uh, I'm no, I'm not betting the home underdog here. And even okay. though like the Hilton and Hendrickson injuries, like those are so big with the Bengals already missing a woozy. And now they've got their two top corners out and the guy who can raise the most havoc with the pass rush to try to make things easier on the cornerbacks who are left. And those guys are out of commission. So not insignificant. And that's pretty much why my projection is where it is. But I mean, the Bengals have been so good against the number like 11 and three, uh on the season against the spread and uh they've won six straight covered six straight have not lost or failed to cover since halloween and um you know joe you kind of said it here like um yeah like 
even though they came out so flat against the Buccaneers, uh, just completely dysfunctional on offense at the start of that game, all of a sudden they just got it together and just flattened the Buccaneers. They did. And, uh, you know, like not a bad defense. And they just like got their act together and and just yeah. completely overwhelmed yeah. the box. The Patriots have not played a lot of good teams, though, too. I mean, if you're looking back at the schedule, too, I mean, they've played the Steelers. You know, they've played, uh, no offense, the Packers, not a great football team this year. The lo- They caught the Lions when the Lions were really down. Uh, they played the Browns without, you know, they said Jacoby Brissett Browns, not that Deshaun Watson Browns have been great. They've probably been worse some ways <laughs> offensively. Uh, but then they've struggled even against teams like the Bears. They played close games against the Jets. I mean, this is, I think we have a false sense of security on some of that Patriots covering at home confidence kind of thing that normally I'd be all over with you. But I just, I don't think this team is any good. I just don't. Yeah. Just straight up You're saying right. it. All yeah, I like it is, folks. Yeah, one Five final. Three. Go oh, ahead, sorry. Fitz. I was just going to say they were going into yesterday. They were five and two against teams with losing records, and uh, you know, drop a game they maybe should not have dropped against uh, the <laughs> the Raiders. Oh, so, yeah, that's the problem. Go ahead, Freeman. Yeah, uh, one final thing on on the Bengals. Like Joe Burrow has been like a road warrior. I, th- I think he's mm-hmm. something like fourteen and seven, or maybe even more than that, against the spread uh, on the road for his career. Like on, on the road, he just absolutely balls out. I, I don't know what it is, maybe just some random split, but the normal road disadvantage that some teams have, the Bengals haven't had with Burrow. The Bengals, by the way, to win the AFC went from plus 650 to plus 500 overnight. Just throwing that out there too, boys and girls, just in case you're interested in where things are moving. Because last year this kind of happened too, and I put a lot of money on the Bengals. I was very happy about that. Uh, Let's get to uh, the next game here, the Tennessee Titans. Oh, boy, oh, boy. (laughs) Things are just not going well for the Titans last few weeks. This was eight and a half. Now it is seven. They are seven-point favorites at home against the Houston Texans. 39.5 39.5 is the number, plus 260 on the money line. I know it sounds crazy here, Pat, but I kind of want to be on the Texan side of this game. Me too, Joe. Um, <laughs> the, the Titans are officially broken. Four straight losses, 15.5 yeah. points a game over that stretch. And Houston, meanwhile, almost beat the Cowboys in week 14 and almost beat the Chiefs in week 15. I, like, I can't take the Titans here. Oh, and by the They've way, another... defensively. They have. They have. Another weather game, by the way, uh, 23 degrees, 17 mile an hour winds in Nashville. Well, it's not like Tennessee can throw the football anyway. Uh, Friedman, your thoughts sure. here on this game. Are you with me and Fitz? Are you just feeling crazy here? You want to go in with us on the Houston Texans, the one win team? I mean, I'm not betting the Texans, but I really don't want to bet against them either. I have this projected at seven. <laughs> sorry, I haven't projected it eight. So in theory, I'm showing value on the Titans at seven, but it's not as if I'm betting it. I'm, I'm probably not going to bet it. Uh, as Fitz said, their defense is totally broken. The number of injuries that they have uh, on that side of the ball is just, it, it's comical. Like mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's like something that you would see in a Fairly Brothers movie. Like they're, they're just so injured uh, mm-hmm. and they're, they're like there aren't reinforcements mm-hmm. coming. Some of these guys are not returning. And, you know, Traylon Burks, their, their main receiver on offense, like he's dealing with an injury. The the only like positive situation is that uh, Chig Aconquo uh, is like looking like an actual stud tight end. Yeah, like it's mm-hmm. probably not. He he feels like uh, Albert O. Like in a couple of years, we're just gonna be like, oh, I can't believe I was so invested in Aconquo. Like my my like late round tight end. I, know, dude. In every I feel like I was he's in. done more already in his career than Albert O. Did. I don't yeah. know. Like. And they gave him a they gave him a carry yesterday too. Did you see that? I know that was fun. I know. I, like I love that. it. He's, he is John U. Smith or like Delaney Walker. He's like in that mold of Tennessee yeah. Titans tight end. Yeah, like John U. Smith. That was fun. That was a good time. I remember that. All right, let's go to the San Francisco 49ers. Ten and four. Uh, excuse me, eleven and four now. Uh, part of, oh, no wait. Oh, wait. I remember right the first time. No, we're, we're ten and four here. Uh, the uh, Washington Commanders are going to come into San Francisco. It's week fifteen, folks. Sixteen now. Uh, I mean, come on. We're we're just hanging on by a thread. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers, seven point home favorites here against the Washington Commanders. Forty and a half is the number for this one. Plus two sixty on the money line if you like Washington. Freeman, I got to tell you, this one's a little surprising here. Uh, I know it started out at six and a half and it moved to seven. But despite all that, I feel like San Francisco should be more of a favorite in this game despite Brock Purdy. I'm just going to put it there. Like, despite that, it feels like they're just a much better football team. What's Vegas seeing that I'm not? 
Yeah, I mean, this was six and a half in the look ahead. I think it was six and a half when it opened early, but it, it has moved to seven, seven and a half even at FanDuel. I would expect this line to continue to move. I have it projected at seven and a half. I hate betting Kyle Shanahan as a home favorite. That's just like something I intuitively hate, yeah. hate doing. He's been horrible in that situation, but I still bet them at, at six and a half because I think they should be on the other side of seven. And yeah, you're right. I mean, I think the the market the market has liked the commanders uh more than maybe they, maybe more than has been warranted yeah uh, <laughs> and so i think i think that is popping into it and some of it is a little bit of like brock purdy hesitation and i've been hesitant about purdy uh but i i did bump based on what they did last week i did bump the 49ers up pretty significantly in the in the power ratings because yeah like i have a lot of respect for what garoppolo did in that offense over the past half decade but it looks like they're able to replicate some of that with Brock Purdy and with the weapons that they have around and the defense, especially that's, that's enough. Yeah. Right. I mean, for a team that is limited in what they could do offensively, when you take away the run game like that and you put everything on Taylor Heineke, I think it just mistakes central potentially. Just, so that's just to what put, I'm looking at. Just yeah. to put a little perspective on it. This is a commander's team that hasn't been able to beat the giants over the last right. three weeks. Right. Mm-hmm. Like and and now they're right. they're going on the road across country and beating the 49ers. Like, no. That's what I'm talking about. And that's fits the conversation I want to have, which is you know, you can't put away the Giants twice, and now you're gonna go to San Francisco and you're gonna keep this close. Look, I, I understand it's Brock Purdy, I understand it's the third string quarterback. I get all that, but at the same time, I mean this is a real tough sell to see them go across the country and beat the 49ers by you know, or or cover the seven really for me. Tug of war for me here, Joe. Um, you've got that factor. Like, I wonder what sort of headspace the commanders are in, having gone all one and one against the a Giants team. Uh, you know, when I thought, and I'm sure they thought they were the better team. So um, that's got to be staggering. And now their playoff hopes have been dealt a, a severe blow with that bad two game stretch against the Giants. On the other hand, I do feel like the hesitation to endorse Brock Purdy is starting to dissipate a little bit and should it really be dissipating when he is about to face Jonathan Allen Montez Sweat Chase yeah like the the Washington defense is uh a serious unit man I mean like Mr. Irrelevant better pack a lunch for this one because this is not going to be easy to move the ball against this team so I just I'm not inclined to bet either side I could see it being maybe a 49ers moments last night though Saquon did yeah. have some moments last night. He, looked, he did, you know, basically at the end of the game when they were salting it away. That that run <laughs> defense. I don't know if they were just gassed or what. Maybe. But, um, yeah. Uh, still, man, this is a really good defense. So, I don't know. Maybe a a little bit of value on the under. Although, weather isn't really going to be a factor in this one. One of the few games. Um, yeah, I'm probably just not touching this game. All right. Uh, I want to touch this game. Philadelphia Eagles and the Dallas Cowboys. The Dallas Cowboys are one point favorites at home. Uh, this is absurd. 51 and a half is the number. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Like minus 105 for the Eagles on the money line. The Eagles should be three and a half point favorites, at least in this game, in my opinion. I think this is just flat out wrong. Sorry. I've watched this Dallas Cowboy team the last couple of weeks. I've watched the mistakes from Dak Prescott. I have, I think last week the Eagles was a little bit of looking ahead to the Cowboys in this game against the Chicago Bears. That's why it was as close as it was. I think the Eagles are going to go and blow the doors off the Cowboys. That's what I'm saying. Fitz, I'm going to let that stew for a little bit with Matthew Friedman. I'll let you take this one first. Yeah, um, I I feel the same way, Joe. I mean, the the Cowboys check engine light is on right now. (laughs) Uh, You know, they they almost lost as 17-point home favorites against the Texans, and they just got 500-plus yards rolled up on them by the Jaguars. And um, they've got – Injury problems at cornerback. You know, I want to. I want to see what who's possibly coming back and who's still going to be out. But um, if they could not even come close to stopping the Jaguars' offense, how are they going to stop the Eagles' offense? I got Friedman. Go ahead. The floor is yours. I'm not. I'm not disagreeing really with anything that that was said. Uh, I mean, I, I have a bet on the Eagles at plus one and a half, but I don't think the Eagles should be favored in this game. But I think they should be bet. There's there's value on the current number in the market. Like I have this projected as Cowboys uh, favored by half a point 
I, I think Fitz is roughly in that same neighborhood. I think Fitz maybe has it as a pick them. So I, I do think that there's value on the Eagles in the spot. I don't think we need to go the distance of them being favored. But it, uh, to your point, Joe, it wouldn't surprise me if this market flipped. I think the market should flip um, just based, should based on dynamics. And, man, I mean, the Eagles – offensively they can get it done throwing and running the cowboys are extremely vulnerable right now in the secondary mm-hmm. missing two starters and trevon Diggs. you know for for his kind of like quote unquote ball hawking capability he is a liability in coverage because he's always trying to make the big plays and, and the cowboys are unsettled at safety as well so they could really be exploited in this game if the eagles just decide and the eagles one of those few teams that that game plans based on what the defense uh gives them you know like if the eagles are in a matchup where they can run the ball they just run the ball down the other team's throat here they're going to see oh this team is bad on defense in the secondary that's where we're going to exploit them and they can do that with aj brown and with Devonte smith and dallas goddard you bet he's coming back for this game. So, like, that is one thing I haven't taken into account in the projections of Dallas Goddard returning. So, yeah, I, I think the the Eagles, there is massive upside potential for them to roll the Cowboys because they will attack the Cowboys where they're most vulnerable. I'm trying to remember uh, last year, I remember the, the Cowboys did put a hurting on them, right? January 8th game, I'm looking at 51-26. I think they're going to remember that. Yeah. Man. I think they're going to remember that. I think this is a different Eagles team. Uh, Las Vegas Raiders and Pittsburgh Steelers. You guys can have this one. I want nothing to do with this one. You guys have at it. Uh, the Steelers, the two-point favorites. It moved from one to two. I don't know why. You could tell me. 40 and a half is the number here. Plus 110 in the money line. Uh, you could light your money on fire here, Friedman, for all I care. I have nothing, nothing to say really about this game. I have it projected at uh, Pittsburgh, favored by minus, I mean, favored, yeah, one and a half. Uh, the total, whatever. I, I have nothing to say. I'm, <laughs> I'm fine if we go to the next game unless Fitz has something he wants to say. Fitz, I'm anything just, about these two I'm, six and eight juggernauts? <laughs> if I bet any more money against the Raiders, like I'm not going to be able to afford to send my kids to college. Uh, <laughs> like I, I really want to bet the Steelers here. But it's like every time I think the Raiders are done, like after that horrible loss to the Colts, after that horrible loss to Baker Mayfield with the fourth quarter comeback, I'm like, okay, they're going to call it quits. And I bet against them and they, you know, cover or flat out win. So I just I can't do it anymore, Joe. They get hit with the tombstone pile driver and then kick out at two uh, and a half somehow. It's like Adam Sandler Netflix movies. Like they keep coming. You keep hoping one of them is going to work out. And then they're just the same. It's It's funny. I I feel the same way, except the exact opposite is Fitz. I feel like I can't bet on the, the Raiders anymore. Or because I I'm just you know like I I'm traumatized by the losses that they've had. Where even right. with them getting a fairly lucky cover in this past week, I'm just like I fairly? I got lucky. I got lucky. I can't I can't do it again. It's I like can't bet Fried, on this team. Friedman is betting yeah. on the Raiders like for the Jeff Saturday game and the Baker Mayfield game, and I'm betting against the Raiders for the games after that. So basically, Friedman and I are just like you know. Opening our All wallets right. and giving everything away on the road. It's horrible. It's a full slate. We're going to hit overdrive here. Let's kind of lightning round these here. Green Bay and the Miami Dolphins here. Uh, four and a half point favorites are the Dolphins. That feels about right. 46 and a half is the number. Plus 175 on the money line. Pat, what's your early value, if any, on this game? Over. Uh, last four mm. Packers games have produced 59, 44, 73, nice. and 47 points. And uh, yeah, we're not going to get bad weather in Miami. Feels about right to me. What do you think, Friedman? Uh, we are on the Dolphins in this game. You know, uh, Aaron Rodgers is at his best at home, and uh, the Dolphins uh, have a little more rest in this game. Uh, yeah, very much like the Dolphins here. I think okay. I think they are the the seventh best team. I, I think there's a pretty clear, uh, you know, like however it is that people would do their power ratings. You've got the Chiefs, the Bills, you've got the Eagles, and then in some combination, I think you have Bengals, Cowboys, 49ers. I think the number seven team here is the uh, is the Dolphins. I think I agree with that. Uh, all right, let's go to the Los Angeles Rams uh, hosting the Denver Broncos uh, right now in this game. Again, we're waiting for tonight's results, but somehow the Los Angeles Rams are one point favorites at home uh, against the Denver Broncos. Thirty five and a half is the number. Who knows who will play quarterback? 
Friedman, what's your take on this game where you just have to wait for more information before we can even get close to it? I haven't touched it yet, uh, either the side or the total. I'm assuming that uh, Russell Wilson comes back, but that's not like 100% given right. as a probability in, in my projections, but I assume he comes back. I assume the uh, Rams are still going to be very injured, on, especially on defense. I have this projected as uh, Denver minus one and a half, but I mean, I'm not touching it either way. Fitz, it feels like, you know, this line certainly can move depending on what happens to the, like the Rams get their doors blown off. This is going to become even money very quickly. Yeah, but I don't want to like I don't see any early value, anything no, I'm trying to either. capitalize on based on a change. And um, Merry Christmas from the NFL, by the way, giving us Broncos Rams. On, well, uh, I think it's a great 25th. gift because like the Miami game in the morning. Well, that's fun. It's Christmas morning at one o'clock Easter. You know, that's fun. But 430 is like prime Christmas dinner time and nobody has to watch the Rams. And Broncos. Good point. Like, that's and great. It, We're not and by the way, any. how insane is it that this might not be the lowest total on the board? Broncos Rams. No, because of the weather. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good point. Arizona Cardinals four point favorites at home. I'm sorry, four point underdogs at home. Pardon me. Pardon me against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, the Bucks. Forty and a half is the number. Christmas Day, Tom Brady plus one fifty five. All Tom Brady wants for Christmas is a W. He just can't seem to get it. Fits. Uh, what do you make of this game here? The four point favorites on the road against a Cardinal team that they should absolutely handle. But it's one thing about the Bucks we've learned is they don't really handle much. Yeah, I do not want to invest money in either of these teams whatsoever. Can't bet on the Buccaneers at this point. And, uh, you know, even though this is uh, the Kingsbury narrative says bet the, the Cardinals as home dogs, uh, man, with their quarterback issues. I, well, I just Trace McSorley could be the quarterback for this oh game, possibly. So like, if, if we get McSorley here, maybe this is the four we should jump on oh early, Freeman. What do you think? Yeah, I've already bet it. Uh, and this <laughs> number, did. this number is three and a half. It's, it's actually it. still three and a half at Bet MGM. Shout out our sponsor. There you go. Uh, and so get some value there. Uh, you know, it's four at uh, some spots in the market. Actually, it's moved to four and a half at FanDuel. Uh, I think bet it now at, at Bet MGM. Uh, I have this projected at 4.75. I am uh, operating largely under the assumption that we do not see Colt McCoy in this game. I do think it is Trace McSorley, uh, but you know, even if it's Colt McCoy, I don't know how much of a difference that actually makes. And you know, there's a chance some of the players that have been injured uh, for the, the Buccaneers, we see them come back in this game. Uh, quarterback Jamel Dean, uh, multiple edge rushers uh, were injured last week and out. Vita Vea. Tristan Works was pretty close to returning, but didn't play. I think we see him uh, on Christmas. So yeah, I am. I'm very much on the Buccaneers in this spot. Like I don't. I don't like it, but uh, I. I think there is value there. The Indianapolis Colts are home underdogs. Three points to the Los Angeles Chargers. They're going to be road favorites in this one. 47 and a half is the number, plus 145. The Chargers stayed strong and pulled out a tough game. Look, you know, they should they in theory have thrown a lot more on the Tennessee Titans and really put up bigger numbers probably, but the Titans always just, they play tough football. They're a tough football team even with the injuries. That being said, the Colts, I don't know how you rebound after this, Friedman. I don't know what you think of this game here. What are your thoughts? The Colts are also going to have some extra days to think about this, which I think is even more upsetting for them. Uh, your take on Colts and Chargers. Yeah, I actually have this projected at two and a half, which means I'm in theory showing some value on the Colts. But I think a lot of that is home field advantage and the fact that they do have uh, extra time to rest. But I don't really want to be on this game. Extra time to rest, but also think about uh, being on the wrong side yet again of the uh, poor Matt Ryan or poor Matt Ryan. Can we just shout out it's, Matt Ryan? It's not it's, his fault. It's not his fault. I just want to hug him like in Goodwill Hunting and yeah. just over and over again say it's not your fault. But uh, Fitz, what do you make of this one here? Uh, because it's another one where the Chargers are certainly the better talent team, uh, but the Colts have hung in on some of these games lately. Yeah, how do the Colts regroup from blowing a 33 mm -hmm. halftime lead? That's what I can't get over. And they have no Jonathan Taylor, and one of the big reasons they couldn't – well, we don't know that, actually. I shouldn't say that because maybe Jonathan Taylor has a low ankle sprain and is able nope, to come he back. he is uh, unlikely out for the uh, – he was uh, diagnosed with a high ankle sprain. Oh, unlikely it is to a high ankle. Okay, yep, just didn't saw see that. that. Of course, on our, you know, on our fantasy playbook, my playbook app. So, of course, getting all the news there. Very mm. nice. Um, yeah, so with no Jonathan Taylor, one of the reasons they couldn't hold that 33 nothing lead was that they couldn't really run the ball effectively with that big lead. So, um, mm. boy, I, 
even though the Chargers are so up and down, man, I just do not like playing Chargers games this year. Um, if anything, I would be inclined to bet on the Chargers going in and, uh, you know, beating a team that's got to be downtrodden at this point. All right, here we go. Our favorite bets of the week with the early look ahead for me. You know what it is. It's the Jaguars and it's the Eagles. Let's go. Uh, Friedman, what are your favorites going into this week? All right. I still like the Saints. Uh, that number has moved to plus three. I still like the Saints at, at plus three. It's like a I, mantra. I'm not going to say saying it eventually becomes true. I, I just like the Saints. I just like the Saints. I'm not going to say the over of 34 or 34 and a half <laughs> in that game. I'm not going to do it, but that is mighty tempting. Uh, I do like the Eagles at plus one and a half. Uh, I, I think they do have an edge over the Cowboys. And yeah, Tampa Bay uh, minus three and a half at that MGM. Uh, some value uh, relative to the rest of the market. They're going against Arizona. I think there's value. All right, Fitz, what's your favorite early looks in week 16? All right. I like the Ravens to throttle the Falcons in Baltimore, hopefully with Lamar Jackson back under center uh, and cover the seven there. I like the Eagles against the Cowboys. I just think, uh, you know, the Cowboys, the way they're stumbling around lately, I don't know if they can circle the wagons that quickly to take on a really good, really complete team. And um, I was going to say the Browns, but Friedman has really scared me off them with his strong Saints position and his Taysom Hill warning. So I think I'm going to go over on Packers Dolphins. Like one of the few games on the slate that is not going to be affected in any way by weather. I think we're going to see points in that game. Don't forget, everybody, go to BetMGM, download the BetMGM app, and use that promo code BETTINGPROS25 to get a risk-free $1,000 first bet, uh, plus $25 after that first bet settles. So go check that out. It's a fantastic offer. Good this week. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Fitz and Friedman, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. Enjoy Week 16.